Your merciful love, O God, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled and saving justice. So we come to Mass this morning, finally, on this 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. The Holy Mass is offered for the repose of the souls of Charles and Alice Whitefield. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King. O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. <clears throat> A reading from the prophet Zechariah. The Lord says this, Rejoice, heart and soul, daughter of Zion. Shout with gladness, daughter of Jerusalem. <clears throat> See now, your king comes to you. He is victorious. He is triumphant, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt the foal of a donkey. He will banish chariots from Ephraim and horses from Jerusalem. The bow of war will be banished. He will proclaim peace for the nations. His empire shall stretch from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. I will give you glory, O God, my King. I will bless your name forever. I will bless you day after day, 
and praise your name for ever. I will bless your name for ever, O God my King. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. I will bless your name for ever, O God my King. All your creatures shall thank you, O Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your might, O God. I will bless your name forever, O God my King. The Lord is faithful in all his words and loving in all his deeds. The Lord supports all who fall and raises all who are bowed down. I will bless your name. <coughs> A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Your interests are not in the unspiritual, but in the spiritual since the Spirit of God has made his home in you. In fact, unless you possess the Spirit of Christ, you would not belong to him. And if the Spirit of him, who raised Jesus from the dead, is living in you, then he who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to your own mortal bodies through his Spirit, living in you. So then, my brothers, there is no necessity for us to obey our unspiritual selves or to live unspiritual lives. If you do live in that way, you are doomed to die. But if, by the Spirit, you put an end to the misdeeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom to mere children. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to be by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> well, it is good to see you. And I would say that the one thing that has kept me sane over these last hundred days, and I'm sure it's true for each one of yourselves, is friendship. Friendship with Jesus and friendship with my personal friends. And I've certainly been hugely supported by my friends and by the members of the parish family during this time. It's been truly the bearing of one another's burdens. 
Our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ came among us on earth to lighten our burdens by taking them on himself. This is the essence of the gospel and we've just heard it explicitly. The burdens of life that we experience, the ups and the downs, they come in all sorts of different forms from physical disability to moral weakness, family and relational problems to financial and professional burdens. But what we do not believe as Christians about any of these burdens of life is that God God somehow sends them to us in order to to kind of bring us to breaking point. That's not the kind of God that we believe in. He does not create evil, but God does allow evil to exist, like pandemics, in order to bring about a complete dependence on him. Because God is always trying to let us see that out of evil, out of bad, good will always emerge. We don't see it at the time, but eventually we'll always see that goodness has come of something bad. Now sometimes, of course, we do make burdens for ourselves when we deflect our life and our destiny away from God and from his purposes. When we use science and technology and material goods as solutions and as alternatives to the cross and virtue. Then, emptiness and human misery invariably follows. And today we're faced, let's be honest, with multiple and complex situations which have never existed before. We're facing new challenges every day, even right now. And we're not alone if we feel confused and disorientated. Whatever the dilemmas of life that we are faced with, we know that somewhere our faith will help us and make sense of the jungle that is life. The burdens which Christ offers are those of truth and faithfulness, which are not burdens at all, because paradoxically, they're allowed by a God who wants to liberate us from the tyranny of becoming slaves to the world, slaves to the times in which we live, and slaves to an understanding of life that has nothing to do with that easy yoke and light burden, which is friendship with Jesus Christ. So I think our daily thoughts, our daily questions, should be along these lines. Is Christ commanding my life in every detail? Is he the Lord of my family life? Is my family under his guidance? My recreational life, my professional life, are they under the Lordship of Jesus Christ? Is Jesus Christ Lord of every room in my house? Even my most private life is not my prerogative. It belongs to him. Do my friendships serve his purpose? Am I totally given over to his lordship? It might sound oppressive, but remember, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. What makes life burdensome is ordering our lives to the way of the world. What makes our lives light is ordering our ways to those of Christ the King. The hearts of Jesus and Mary are symbols of God's love for us. Not just sweet caricatures that we can't relate to but the hearts that represent a love reaching out to every member of God's family. They're about friendship, about intimacy and relationship, which is at the heart of our religion. If we want to go to their hearts, the hearts of Jesus and of Mary, then we will find that sure refuge and strength from all of the burdens 
that this life presents. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from God, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Christ, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son has adored and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy.
you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith save us. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my life, that I may say the word of my soul. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed the man who seeks refuge in him. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Well, I think each and every one of us could echo those words of the disciples this morning. Lord, it is good for us to be here. And also, I think it's good that you can see that I'm not simply a load of pixels on a screen, that I do actually still exist. If we are to continue to have Mass and keep the church open daily, albeit on a reduced scale at the moment, then we do need volunteers each day to help with the stewarding. Um, please sign up on the website if you can. Uh, it's important that we try to maintain uh, the schedule as we have it now and to keep the church open each day, but we can only do it if there are enough volunteers. And I want to thank those of you who have so generously given of your time in volunteering over the last three weeks already in order to keep the church open and to assist with the weekend masses. Uh, please follow the events of the parish on the website and the other social media. It's best, if you can, to subscribe to the electronic newsletter, which will keep you informed of any changes in the schedule. If you know someone who doesn't have internet access, then you might look out for them and help them to book up for things or to keep them informed of news. Any weekly offerings for the parish that you can give can be placed in the baskets at the back of the church and I do thank you for your continued generosity through this time. I can't be at the back of the church after the masses at the weekend but if you do want anything from me, anything that I can provide of course, then do please email me or call me. I'm at your disposal. I wish you a very blessed Sunday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen.